This is an original story. It is in the style of an African fable mixed with a bi biology class lecture on climatology. That's the way it works. The goddess of creation had gotten this message that in South Africa, there was a group of elephants that had great difficulty in getting along and had summoned for the goddess to come and try to straighten things out. Well, the goddess loved elephants and she figured this will be easy for me, easy for me to handle this. When she got there, she was really shocked at what was going on. There was a particular elephant that all of the other elephants hated. And this elephant they called the cripple. They called him the gimp. And they called him words way worse than that. You see, he was very small. He was not much larger than like a, almost like a baby elephant. And one of his legs was very short. So when he ran, he had to walk only on or run on three legs. And then his poor trunk, it was also very short. And if he wanted to eat something from the ground, he had to get on his knees for his trunk to reach out and get it. And the trunk looked like a withered worm. So they all made fun of him and they wanted to get rid of him, but he liked being there. And so the goddess, said, let me talk to him. I will have a talk and I will come back. So she gave a talk to this little elephant and said, you know, you, you, we, maybe we can find a special role for you in the, in the herd and you can do something really special. Can you think about that? And, you know, he was saying, well, there's small things and I can get in small places where other elephants can't get. I could help that way. Wonderful idea. So she goes back to the herd and asks them to, you know, he could have a special role. Can you just please cut the bad words about him? Can you please treat him fairly and nicely? Well, mm, mm, and I said, yes, we can do that. Well, the goddess left and immediately the herd of elephants said, well, let's celebrate our friendship together and go down to the river and we will have a mud bath. Elephants love mud baths. So they went down to the river and the first one to go into the water or into the mud was the bull elephant, the head guy. And then next was to be our little friend. Well, because he had this very short leg, when he went to get onto the embankment to go into the river, he slid and slid with such a force that he hit the bull elephant and knocked him down into the mud. Ah, this elephant was furious. He thought he had, this was all was a trick and was done intentionally. And he was so angry. He said, you're dead meat. I'm not gonna have you around. The other elephants, however, were laughing hysterically. They just thought it was so funny that, the, that this little elephant had knocked down the big bull. Well, the little elephant was scared, so he ran away. And people didn't even know he was running away because they were so busy laughing, those elephants. So he hid, he hid in a kind of a thicket and he was there, he was very lonely, he could barely find enough to eat and he was very sad. And he felt like everything was his fault, very, just it was his fault. So one of the things that he would do is he would reach for a tree branch and take the tree branch down with his trunk and then whip himself as kind of like a self-flagellation. So this one particular day, he reached up, grabbed a branch, started whipping himself, and then there was this, stop it, stop it. It was a snake. It wasn't a tree branch at all. It was a snake, a long gray snake. And the elephant was so apologetic. And he was just went on and about how all the awful things that he did and, and what all the things were wrong with him in the snakes. It's, oh, stop it, stop it. Let me tell you, I had the same problems. I am totally gray. I don't have any stripes. I don't have any spots. I don't have any diamond shapes. 
And look, I'm the skinniest snake you've ever seen. I'm six feet long and I can't even swallow anything bigger than a baby mouse. Well, they felt happy. They felt very good. And then the snake said, and you know, I don't even have any poison. At that moment, there was a screaming up in the tree and a spider came jumping down. I thought I was the only creature that's supposed to have poison and I don't have any poison. Well, the three became very good friends fast. It didn't last long. There was a noise in the thicket and then there was another elephant there. So what happened was the elephant ran back to the herd and the three friends were thinking, oh my God, this is, it's over, it's over. What are we gonna do? But the spider said, I have a plan. So they went up to the ridge when they saw the herd of elephants coming toward their little hiding place. The young elephant stepped out and said, oh, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I didn't mean to do anything to harm you. And the bull elephant goes, oh no, you're gonna pay for this. You really are. And the young elephant says, well, perhaps I could challenge someone, uh, an elephant about my size to a fight. And, and, and we'll see how that goes, when, who, that, who would win. And of course, all the elephants just started laughing hysterically. How could this broken down elephant possibly fight? What he didn't know is that the snake wrapped itself around the elephant's trunk. And so the trunk was much, much thicker. So the two elephants are coming to meet and just not too far away, our friend, suddenly his trunk started to grow and it got longer and longer and longer. And all the elephants were, they didn't know it was a trick. They were excited, they were, it was like crazy. They were gonna, so they found this other elephant just really intimidated. He didn't know what to do, but he was gonna fight. He was gonna show he could do it. So the two elephants met and just when they got pretty close, the snake at the end of the trunk stuck up its head and stuck out his tongue. <clears throat> the elephant was terrified, started running. But you know, what's going on? What's going on? Well, what was going on was that spider was very busy. Now, what you didn't know about that spider was he might not have any poison, but he could make webs. And he was making webs on all over the elephant's eyes. But what happened was when the elephants were blind, and the elephants were scared, terrible things happened. They ran over a village, killed lots of people. They killed other animals. Well, the goddess of creation said, oh no, I have to punish them. I have to take away their existence. And she came and she loved elephants. She loved snakes and spiders. She hated to do it, but she had to end their lives. And then she thought, I can offer them reincarnation. And so what she did is she took the elephant and turned him into an elephant bush. An elephant bush is one of the plants that we now know elephants like to eat. The snake she turned into a snake plant because yeah, it was the shape of the snake's tongue, which also was green and pointed. And then the spider was turned into a spider plant. And that's how we got those plants. Well, lots of time has passed and we appreciate those plants very much because the lowly spider plant and the and the, and the snake plant have gone to show have gone to show that they take air and purify it. And houses that have these plants in the house get healthier because the air is better. And now in South Africa, there are farms that are raising elephant plants, the elephant bush, because they found that it can clean air in vast areas. This plant could grow 20 to 40 feet high. 
It can live 200 years and South Africa is being reforested with this. So folks, get your elephant, bush, your snake plant and your spider plant and be happy. Thank you.